I'm back in Hawkshead looking to do another walk from the excellent Hideaways walking book. I did Latter Barrow last time and very nice it was too but this time I'm after something a bit meatier. A Wainwright fell no less which is a bit of a problem because the area around Hawkshead may be very pretty but it's not exactly high fell country. The mountains stand a respectful distance away from this fine old town. Now, despite this, there is a Wainwright Fell that's within easy walking distance of Hawkshead. I'm at Tarn House, and over there, that fell with the sunlight on, is Black Crag. A Wainwright Fell that's about a mile and a half from here, and as luck would have it, it's actually in the Hideaways walking book. Page 15. So that's where I'm heading. From the car park at Tarnhouse, the route is really easy to follow. The path is wide and well maintained, and the scenery is utterly delightful. Having said that, this is Tarnhouse. We do expect a nice wide path and beautiful scenery. I suppose I should just enjoy it while it lasts. After all, I'm about to go up a Wainwright Fell. Now, the book says to go that way, along that track, and then turn right at the end and up towards Black Crack. But I've got a better idea. I know a shortcut where the walking's a bit more scenic, and we'll come out at the same place, but it will cut off half a mile. Brilliant, hey? There's a good reason why the book doesn't include this shortcut. Although the path I'm taking is on the National Trust map of the area, you'll notice that there's no footpath sign at the style I'm about to go over. This path is marked on the Ordnance Survey map, but it disappears halfway across the field. Now, in reality, it takes a higher route to avoid the bog. Even so, in, in really wet weather, it can get a bit sticky. The route outlined in the book is along a really well-made clear path. It's just a bit longer in distance, that's all. Just beyond this gate, we join up with the route in the book. If I can get the gate open, that is. Over 40 years of fell walking, you'd think by now that I should be able to open and close a gate properly. One last look at town house, then off up this rocky track. It's actually a public byway, so in theory any vehicle can use it. Although you'll not see mine anywhere near it. Turn left here. follow this rocky track up a fairly gentle slope actually for about a third of a mile. Do you know when I first came along here quite a few years ago now it was pretty dense woodland the light rarely got through properly. It's very different nowadays. Just go through this kissing gate 
then turn sharp right and follow this narrow path up the fell. I always think that one of the beauties of this walk is that you don't really need a certificate in advanced navigation to follow it. You just follow the line of the cairns across the field and plenty of people have done this walk over the years now so it, it really is quite easy to follow. Although I should just add a rider to that to say that the path can sometimes get quite boggy. You get halfway up and it also gets quite scenic. That's Lingmoor with the Langdale Pikes peeking over the top. Crinkle Crags and Bow Fell. Nice view of Weatherland there. Now there's what appears to be the Summit Cairn in the distance there, but don't be fooled. There's the top. Plenty of people up there by the look of it. Now, I don't know about you, but I never get tired of looking at that view. Another thing I like about this walk is that at no point is it too steep or rugged. It's just a nice steady climb up to the top. It's not that I mind steep or rugged. It's just that nowadays my knees object. Turns out all those people was one walking group. I've actually got the summit to myself. The key question is, are the views worth the effort of getting here? I think that one might be. That's Windermere. Low Wood. Two Ill Bells for the price of one there. You've got Ill Bell above Ambleside. You've also got Mardale Ill Bell. Drosick in between them. Estwaite water to the south. Hawk said hiding behind that clump of trees. And there's where we've walked from. Tarnhouse with Coniston water in the distance. The fells that make up the Fairfield Horseshoe. Dolly Wagon Pike, Nethermost Pike, Helvellyn, and even a glimpse of the flanks of Blancathra. Steel Fell to the left of Dunmail Rays. The village of Chapel Style with Silver Howe as its backdrop. Old Scarf, Sergeant Man and High Rays they're coming to the left. All in all, it's an impressive mountain panorama for such a small fell. And certainly worth the effort of getting here. <laughs>